a little girl's name, Nevaeh. You seen this? Nevaeh. The trick is, the trick is, it's heaven spelled backwards. Nevaeh. I don't think parents are thinking. <laughs> First of all, I would not want my name to be heaven, but going the other way. Like, this is little Nevaeh. It's like heaven, but the opposite. Demon baby. Whoa, okay. And second of, all, second of all, you know the parents think this. Just because you name your daughter something about heaven backwards doesn't mean she'll be an angel. It doesn't. Okay. Merry Christmas and welcome to a special edition of the Sean Bull Show. I'm so glad to be with you on Christmas Day. If you're watching this live or if you're watching the other day, we're so glad you're here and discerning what the world's happening around us with a biblical and spiritual lens together. And today we're going to be talking about comedians that are faith-based that are actually worth following on the socials. Hopefully it'll give you a lot of things to laugh at during the holiday season. I can't wait to watch them. Then I get to react to Christmas Christian movie trailers that I haven't seen before. So this is going to be brand new for me. Are they cringe? Are they worth it? I'm kind of scared because I don't like a lot of faith-based movies, but they've been getting better over the you know the past season, especially the past 24 months. So let's see. You can be the judge with me or maybe judgmental with me. Hopefully not. We have an interview with a nutraceuticals expert who's going to be taking us just into a new level of understanding about what's available for our health journey in 2024, whether you struggle with sleep issues or hormone issues or any kind of imbalances, there is nutraceuticals, which is basically not pharmaceuticals, but all the things that are natural that God's put on the earth and his philosophy. And he'll share this in the interview is that everything that we need for our health and healing is already on the earth for us. So we either need God's power or we need God's power to get a hold of these and the right sources, and they've been doing it for 30 years. Finally, I have news you need to know that's a special Christmas edition and a prophetic word where God gave me a dream of you opening a present in this season that he's about to give you. So you don't want to miss that or anything that we have on the show. But before we get there, I do want to say we need your help in 2024 to reach an audience with a gospel and also discernment. There aren't any shows quite like the Sean Bull Show, I think, and we're raising our partnership goals in 2024, and I need your help. We uh, are inviting you to go to bullsministries.com to give a donation or to join our partner program. And I love that the Barna Group just released a report that said Christian mass media reaches more adults with a Christian message than do churches. And many Americans assume that the most common way of experiencing Christian faith is by attending a church service. But a new nationwide survey by the Barna Research Group of Ventura, California reports a different conclusion. A great number of adults experience the Christian faith through Christian media, such as radio, television, or books, and even more so than attend Christian church services. The new study states that slightly more, six out of 10 American adults, 63% attended church service during the past month. In contrast, two out of every three adults uh, use some sort of religious media, radio, television, or books for a dose of Christian faith in the past month. In raw numbers, that's about 132 million adults versus 141 million adults using Christian media. This is important because we've switched from traditional ministry to meeting in your workplace, home, or car, or an exercise routine helping you experience a commentary through this show, The Sean Bull Show, that gives you a perspective that hopefully is challenging and life-giving. And I just want to ask if you'll help us on our mission. Again, go to bullsministries.com today, and you're going to love the stories we come out with next year. We have so much to cover, and there's world events happening. It feels like daily, so we have almost daily videos as well. But now on to our first story, and hopefully this is going to make you laugh a lot like it did me. Well, Christian comedy broke the internet in 2023, and we all need a good laugh. I don't know about you, but in a year where more world events happen than any time in our modern history, and your TikTok, Instagram, and X platform might have all preached that all the things you needed to know or all the people you needed to help and how much weight you need to lose. It's it's so good to find a break in this intensity with all these faith-based comedians that are coming. Some are doing sketches, some are just telling jokes, some are repurposing memes with a Christian thrust to them. But all of them have brought so much joy this year in 2023. And I hope that if you don't know them, that they're going to help you as well. So we're going to look at some of the best of this year that I found, and we're going to start out right now. Let's watch the first video. And I am a hugger. I love hugging people. Like, I'm a hugger. I can't, and men, I'm cool with hugging men too. Men, we got some rules when we hug, though, don't we? We got rules, don't we? Fellas like, yeah. Anybody know any of the rules? Nope. You know why? Because we don't talk about it. If you're a man in here, when was the last time you talked to another man about how you want to be hugged? That's not something we discussed, but there are rules. I'm going to share some of the rules with you right now. Rule number one, the hug can only last 1.4 seconds. This is when men hug, and it can only last 1.4 seconds. And you know the hug is over because of rule number two. Every time we hug, what we do? We tap out. Tap, tap, release. 
Fellas, nobody taught you to tap out? You just know you're supposed to tap out. Like it's just in you. Tap, tap, release. Fellas, you ever tap out and they don't release? I'm like, tap, tap, bro. Tap, tap. I'm doing Morris code on this dude back. Tap, 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 tap. I tapped him so hard he burped. I'm like, dude, you, you just burped, man. Another rule we have is left hand under, right hand over, tap out, release. It's left hand under. I don't care if you left hand or right hand. It don't matter. Left hand under, right hand over, tap out, release. Fellas, you know how you know this is a rule? You ever have a dude try to go under, under? He can't go under, under. He go under, under. You got to go over, over. Now y'all slow dancing. That's what you're doing. Turn on Luther Vandross at this point. Or John the Mayor for this audience. <laughs> that, was, that was funny for me. John Mayer. That's great. <laughs> he was doing this. The cool thing about this is he was doing this in a church service, which is so awesome. So Michael Jr. has been showing up at churches near you, and he's also has specials out. My next one is Trey Kennedy. If you haven't watched Trey Kennedy, now there's, I'm not vouching for all, <laughs> all the content they put out there. This was funny. There was like a little joke in the middle of this one. I actually watched this one in advance. There's a little joke in the middle that's a little controversial, a little spicy. But um, Trey is a Christian believer, and he's out there doing clean comedy for the most part <laughs> in mainstream audiences. But he has almost daily content that comes out, and we die laughing, my wife and I. Here we go. Let's watch some Trey Kennedy. A lot of folks these days, what they're naming their kids, they're just making stuff up. <laughs> Baby number four has arrived. We're done after him, so that's why we named him Lastin. That's what people are doing. They're trying to, like, justify why they named their kid a name that's just not a name at all. <laughs> he proposed by the river on my dad's farm. So we'd love to introduce the world to Tributary. Tributary? <laughs> it's the weakest of all the water channels. Why would you even do that? That's, that's my issue with this. I, I, don't, I don't think parents are setting their kids up for success when they name them. This crazy stuff. This kid's got to go their whole life with this name, you know, make friends, get jobs, careers. Yeah, just uh, honestly, like I was doing a baby dedication at our church here in LA. You guys know that I live in LA. And I'm doing a baby dedication, and all the names were like, like Forest Rain and like um, Anchor Zion and like all these different names that like you've never heard in any other <laughs> baby dedication anywhere in your entire life. And so what he's saying is true. Like this whole generation of people is naming their kids things that their kids are going to be looking back and going, Either they're going to be movie stars or super famous and love it, or they're going to be like, why? Why can I be Michael? Why can I be Sarah? You know? So I love what he's saying. A uh, little girl's named Nevaeh. You ever seen this? Nevaeh. The trick is, the trick is, it's heaven spelled backwards. Nevaeh. I don't think parents are thinking. <laughs> I don't. First of all, I would not want my name to be heaven, but going the other way. Like, this is little Nevaeh. It's like heaven, but the opposite. Demon baby. Whoa, okay. What? And second of all, second of all, you know the parents think this. Just because you name your daughter something about heaven backwards doesn't mean she'll be an angel. It doesn't. Okay. I have proof. I have proof. I dated a girl named Natasha growing up, and she could not have been nicer. And just think of what Natasha spells backwards. Ah, oh, Satan. She was really nice. <laughs> Half of you can't figure out the joke. <laughs> okay, if you get that, you got to write in the comments what he meant by that. But the next one, we're going to go on to, <laughs> I love Trey Kennedy. Again, watch him. He has some really good stuff. Crossovers, Jay, Jonathan Chris, who I would put on this list, but we all know who he is already. But here's another one that you may not have heard of yet. She's a Pentecostal sweetheart of the Christian faith. And she did one of my favorite, which I showed last year. So I'm not going to bring it back up. But it was when she delivered the Grinch from Jim Carrey, the Grinch who stole Christmas. She delivered him. And if you haven't watched that, it's one of my all-time favorite funny comedy clips for Christians in the world. I love this because whenever you see this picture of Jesus, and people have been using this on TikTok quite a bit, this filter, it just, he looks like a Cocker Spaniel. It does not look like a Middle Eastern man who is our Jesus. It looks like this white contemporary version. So I love that she used this and that she said this. Go ahead. says your hair is like wool it don't look like wool it look like <laughs> wet and wavy and in your feet it's supposed to be like bronze and that don't look like uh-uh put me down 
<laughs> put, I don't know who you are. Put me down. Am I not in heaven? <laughs> you gotta follow Anastasia Douglas. She's she's perfect. And I I watch her. We literally watch her. We laugh out loud at her almost every day, if not every week. And then our next one is Jared. Now you might have seen a clip of this. I can't play too much of it because it's probably copyrighted. So I'm just gonna respond to it real fast. But the Chick-fil-A song, if you hadn't heard this rap Chick-fil-A song, let's play it from like the middle. School. Hey, hey. You don't have to buy your head. Nah. You don't have to pray for your food. Nah. You had a Bible study in the back. We already pray for you. Pre blessed. <laughs> This is an amazing video. So if you have not seen this video, just look, look up Jared Chick-fil-A and you'll find it. But all of this, I just want to encourage you, you know, there's so much laughter to be had in the midst of what's going on, both to things that are happening in culture. I think laughter and joy is one of the gifts God gives us. So I'm going to encourage you to laugh, laugh when it's hard, laugh when it's funny, laugh when it's good, laugh when it's not good. But also, I also want to tell you that we have an incredible academy that's going to help you with your spiritual growth. And this video is sponsored by our academy and we are half off right now. So if you want to sow into your own spiritual growth for the new year, there's two things that you're going to get the most of. One is a community of people who are in classes with you every month. They're going through four weeks of different subjects. My next class is coming up. It's all about learning how to be a feeler, seer, knower, discerner, to understand how to be a feeler, how to be, what to do with that, how to not let it rule you, but you rule it. So the types of prophetic ways when God's nonverbal and talks to us. It's going to be a really profound class for four weeks in January. But we also have an online thriving community. The other thing is, even when I'm not teaching the classes every month, because we have so many diverse, amazing teachers, I am still your mentor online. And for two or three hours a month, every month we have an accelerator where I'm actually teaching you and then we're activating, we're actually doing assignments based on what we're teaching about and hearing God's voice. So the school itself deals with a lot of different spiritual gifts and spiritual focuses, but the accelerator is really, if you wanna grow on the prophetic, you wanna join this because we have an online community, we have activation group, we have my accelerator classes and you don't wanna miss it, it's half off. We've never been priced this low and you're going to get so much content. There's no other platform that offers you so much for this price. So I'm going to encourage you to go right now, get the half off. It's, it's, you don't have to enter a code or anything. Just go there. It's, it's on sale now and we won't do this sale again, but we want to give you easy entry into one of the greatest spiritual developers for your spiritual gifts and your hearing God's voice, like understanding how to hear God's voice and make it useful in your life. So come join us there and we'll see you next time. Well, if you like cheesy Christmas movies or you wanna be inspired in your faith this Christmas, you have options maybe more than ever for the first time on this level. There's some classics and new movies that can help your family or just give you those Hallmark feels, but with a faith twist, I haven't seen them, like I said, we're gonna look at them together and I'm excited to see them with you. And I'm gonna be honest in my reaction because just so you know, like I'm not that my wife and my family and my parents, they love the great American movie film classics and the Hallmark classics and these kinds of things. I run away from those Die Hard as a Christmas movie in my mind. And so a lot of the things that come out when it comes to just the genre of Christmas movies I don't like, let alone faith-based genre. So you will love them and i'm going to celebrate your love for them and i'll see if i like the trailer and i'll tell you which ones i honestly want to see let's go you know it's very hard to find a place that even comes close to being worthy of your beauty it's romantic it's about you and me alone wow look at the two of you merry christmas america hollywood has canceled mason stone stone will be digitally replaced by ai boycott stone we will no longer be manufacturing mason stone character get them all out of here by christmas eve you gotta be kidding me. How'd you get it? Oh, oh, fell off the truck. There was a truck involved. The mysterious gift giver has struck again. You get busted with those toys, you're done. And you made me an accessory. Well, you know what they say, some accessories are required. Am I smiling? No. Jingle smells, jingle smells, stinking all the way. They call me jingle smells. <laughs> yeah, I know. Okay, so we got Rumble has a movie called Jingle Smells coming out. That looks like John Snyder. I mean, that's... There's some notable actors in there. There's some some real people that looks. I would see that. I would actually watch that. I mean, I didn't have any laugh, laugh out loud moments in the trailer, but it was, you know, it was it was strong. Let's go to number two. Thank you so much for joining us as we celebrate the Savior born to us in Bethlehem. This isn't just the story of a baby's arrival. This is an earth shattering. Okay, this is a Max Licato Christmas special where he's sharing and they're doing, it looks like music. I would definitely, I'm in. I'm in. He's like one of my favorite storytellers. Revelation. Jesus promised, I will come again. Not to deal with sin, 
but to save those who are eagerly waiting for him. Okay. Performance by Matthew West. Christy Wine is my girl. I love her. Matt Mayer. Kind of crap. After Ann all, Wilson. it is yeah. because of Bethlehem that we have a Savior in heaven. Merry Christmas. Okay, not like a traditional Christmas movie, but that would be a good one to watch for at least my wife and I. I don't know if my kids would be into it, but my wife and I, that's like, that's cool. Okay, let's keep going. I always wondered, why do we put a star on the tree? Great American but I know family. now that the star lit the path. This was her favorite time of year. First Christmas without Grandpa. Nicole, your first patient. He's really cute. Good morning, Major Ross. I'm Dr. Ramsey, I think. That's what's on your coat there. Why are you smiling at me like that? What? Can't I smile at my daughter? That's an I'm gonna meddle in Nicole's life kind of smile. My father. I just wish she'd had more Christmases with him. He was a hero. Okay. Hey, Mom, would you mind if I tried to find out more? You don't think about Candace Cameron, though. She's so classy, and she's a really good actress, so she kind of levels up these kinds of films. Whereas some sometimes, I mean, if you watch Lifetime or Hallmark or Great American Family Channel, it just feels like it's like, I mean, I watch Sci-Fi Channel, honestly. Like, I watch science fiction stupid movies, and they're, like, they're really dumb. And, like, people who don't like science fiction movies don't like science fiction movies. Well, people who don't like Hallmark movies don't like Hallmark movies. But I will say, a couple of Candace's movies, movies i've watched not because of her just i happen to watch them with my wife i'm like okay she classes it up she's she's believable in all her characters so here we go about how he died oh sure honey and i think i might know the perfect person to help me my grandfather was in world war ii now i want to know everything this would be the perfect christmas present i'd be happy to help that twinkle in your eyes isn't coming from those christmas tree lights Ooh. Apparently, Ooh. your grandfather's infantry company, one of them, it's a family mystery this afternoon. It's a date. The handsome major. I mean, yes, it's great. Um, right. Yeah. By the grace of God and with the help of some amazing people, I have a story to tell you. I was able to track down your grandfather's infantry company major. What an amazing gift he gave us. You'll be meeting my dad. Oh, well, I'm looking forward to meeting him. Dad, this is my my this is my major uh Daniel's fine. <laughs> <laughs> this is so Okay, so if you if you've ever looked at those uh, you know, like those memes where it shows you Hallmark's oh, newest movies and they all look the same as the oldest movies because the girl's always in the red dress and the guy's always in the suit. It feels like I mean it has that like formula to it, but it's cute. I mean you know, for if you're a guy and you're not into Hallmark or you're not in a great American family, watch it with your wife for a good day and night they'll thank you for it. And so that's good. But I'm, it's not my, like, I wouldn't go and see it. I wouldn't like turn it on myself, but Hey, my wife definitely would. She's like one of those people and I would watch it with her. This is a, amazing. So there's, this is just showing you that the Christian faith-based world has matured a whole lot. The chosen is the number one show possibly in history, as far as how many languages it's translated into and being watched from. So we have some options and this is good. And those of you who are really believing that there needs to be a change in the entertainment industry, you think of like the Disney effect where Disney has lost over half of its net value right now. Where is that money going? And it looks like that money is going where families are wanting to really participate with media and entertainment and film. It looks like there's some funding and budgeting that's been happening in the Christian industry for the last two years as companies like Disney are tanking and Nickelodeon lost a huge amount of money. Other family channels, other family centric companies are losing money. It's appearing somewhere while well, Angel Studios and other studios, Great American Film Channel, they're gaining that finances. And that's phenomenal. I think it's so important that that happens. Well, up next, we have an interview with a man who is into nutraceuticals. You don't want to miss it. Well, with the current crisis over mental health and also physical health, everything from people not sleeping well to eating wrongly, having obesity crisis in America, seeing it all the way as young as little babies and infants, people are trying to figure out their health options. And I just read a recent report that says uh, four out of five people will not visit a doctor unless it's a major issue right now because of fear. After the pandemic hit, a lot of people have not gone back to take care of their health. Everything from mammograms and uh, colonoscopies all the way to just basic health issues like a very severe cold or flu. And today I have a guest on who he started a company over 30 years ago to really help people in their place of health. And he started it because God motivated him to start it. And they do nutraceuticals. It's called Nutramedics. And I want to talk to Tim about the current health crisis and what he sees God doing. So, Tim, welcome to the show. Hi, Sean. Thank you for having me on. Good to see you. I'm so glad to see you. I, I'm just so fascinated still by some of the stories you've told me behind the scenes as far as your team getting like 
messages from God on which plants might have properties mm -hmm. to bring cures. And then as you guys do the science and actually research with those plants, how it's actually brought solutions to very, very common plaguing problems to humanity right now. And you said something in an interview I did with you where you said everything that we need to be healthy, God's put on the earth. And so I just, I love that because you're proving it because you've had a company now that's done this for decades. How did you start in the nutraceuticals and, and with nutramedics? Um, well, it, it, it began when I was a, a missionary pilot in the Amazon in Peru, and I began to learn about uh, medicinal plants from the tribal people. And, and then when uh, the time came, I met my wife, got married, and we, we thought, you know, we can make a bigger impact for the kingdom by sending money to Peru to, uh, to support and train national yep. pastors. And so we let's start a business. And, and so we, um, we, we arrived at a purpose first to, to, to uh, once again, to fund ministry in Peru, specifically training national pastors and, and, and all that that entails. Um, so we, we landed on medicinal plants and we started the company almost, almost 31 years ago. So that my, my initial understanding of medicinal plants came from yeah. the tribal uh, groups in Peru. To give us hope for the medical future. I think like you guys are constantly exploring and asking God for new products. And so you take teams down and you don't meet with shamans of tribes, which a lot of the companies do. They'll meet with the shaman and say, what's been working for you for generations? But you actually ask God and you meet with your the botanist and the scientist and all these people, the doctors, and you guys go out together on investigation, kind of surveying, God, where are you? What, what do you want to use today? Like to give us hope for the future. Yeah, I, I do believe with you, Sean, that, that everything we need is here on the planet. Um, exactly where it is, we that. don't always know. Um, so we ask God, we ask the Holy Spirit, take us to where the plants are that you want us to find. And it's just been just incredible experiences, and not just in Peru, but in other countries where we found uh, where we have uh, identified uh, plants that are, that are that are very helpful. So, um, I I do think there are that there are there are solutions uh, to to um, uh, probably everything out there. Um, you know, even as even as more we're exposed to more and more toxins mm -hmm. in the air, in the food, uh, et cetera. Um, they, we're, we're adding more and more products that help our bodies detox. Oh, I love that. Because we need more. You know, before, even 10 years ago, okay, you're okay with this, these couple of detox products, but now we need more. Um, so so uh, we've added several new products uh, this year. Um, and, for instance, um, uh, one is a glutathione product. A lot of people... They may their body may not be producing enough glutathione. It's a very important uh, uh, nutrient, and so um, you can supplement that, and 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 and, uh, and your body can then um, do what it's created to yeah. do. Yeah. And um, so these things, these supplements are helping. They're supporting mm -hmm. the, the the body uh, do what what it's supposed to. The you know the immune system is supposed to just move toxins out of your body, but sometimes there's, there's blockages and, 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 and it's not happening the way, the way it's supposed to. So, um, you know, I take, I take a lot of our products every day and I feel great. I'm 63, but I feel like I'm 23 and I, I sleep that. well. I, 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 my mood I think is good. I have to ask <laughs> check for my wife. But, uh, I, I think so. But I mean, I just, I, um, so many of my friends that are my age are taking maybe six or seven pharmaceuticals. Yeah, that's the um, average right now. Is and, six. And I'm not saying don't. I'm not saying people shouldn't take pharmaceuticals, but you know, um, our uh, I, I think there are God's options. Let's put it that way. Yeah. I think that's so important for people to think about is like, are you taking things that don't have side effects that, you know, with your doctors, a lot of doctors are, are open to this now and are saying, we want to, we want to get you into more of a healthy regimen where 
regular exercise and supplements actually help your mm -hmm. health versus pharmaceuticals that have mm -hmm. a lot of detrimental side effects. And again, some mm -hmm. people need those pharmaceuticals for a season, but I love that mentality of like everything that God, everything we need for our health, God's put on the earth, let's use it. And I love that you guys at Nutramedics actually make that work for us. So I'm encouraged because I think over the holidays, we need to have some new solutions for going to the new year. And I know that you guys are partnering to our show and everybody who wants to try Nutramedics out, you're going to get a 20% discount and you can just enter that code BOLZ, B-O-L-Z, and you're going to get 20% off so you can try out something. Maybe it's over sleep issues. Maybe it's over healthy gut. Maybe it's over... You know, whatever it is, Mood Medics is one of their products to help yep. you with your mood to stay calm. I love all your products so far that I've tried, and I know that our audience is looking for some solutions. I'm so glad that God's given them to you guys. It's not just a normal company, but there's actually been some leading of God. And if you want to hear more about that, make sure to catch Tim's episode of Exploring the Marketplace, where we just talk about the journey story of how they started this company and how God uses Tim and operates through their company as well. And I want to encourage you to catch that episode soon. Well, Tim, thanks for being on the show today. I think this is so important and I love what you're doing. Thank you, Sean. I love what you're doing and appreciate you. And uh, uh, God bless you and your family and Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas to you too. Now here's the news you need to know. For this Christmas, we have Global Prison Ministry to deliver gifts and the gospel to 65,000 inmates here in America which I think you guys have to understand, like these guys are so, and women are so forgotten. The fact that this ministry has gone in and they're actually delivering 65,000 inmates. I wish they would do all of them. And I pray that God would give them the resources for next year for even more, because these people are so forgotten and so passed over. Thank you, God. Remember to pray for prisoners during Christmas. Just pray for people. Even if you don't know who you're praying for, just pray for the prison that's closest to you, that God would bring revelation and love and a change and repentance to people in prison right now. And it could just do so much in this Christmas. Also, Christians are significantly more generous with their money than non-Christians. New research about one's religious faith. Does it influence their generosity? The answer is yes. According to American Bible Society's latest state of the Bible research, the 11th annual report recognizes cultural trends in the United States regarding spirituality and the engagement with the Bible. In this study, the first of its kind compiling data on generosity among Christians during the COVID-19 pandemic shows that the more a person practices their faith through involvement in the church and Bible reading, the more generous they will be with their finances. So if you haven't been generous, are you connected to a church? Are you reading the Bible? And because generosity, what happens with generosity is that you recognize generosity and people are more generous with you as well. Generous givers, according to the report, also tend to be older, married, educated, and report a higher than average uh, satisf satisfaction and happiness. And as for religious factors, generous givers fall in the line of actively reading the Bible and attending the church. I think this is so important as we're coming to a season where it's one of the most generous seasons we could be in that we have to have that mentality of generosity stewarded all year long so that we give in the rhythm of God. You know, there's these rhythms of giving in the cycles when God wants us to give. And I just think this is so profound that Christians are the most generous people group on the earth. And that's awesome because we also are the richest people group on the earth, meaning God is stewarding through Christianity the greatest wealth and resources on the earth right now. And I think gener generosity is the main reason why. Well, another story that I really love is blue Christmas services that are gr a growing trend among churches. And if you've never heard of a blue Christmas service, they've grown significantly, providing a space during the Advent season to honor those experiencing grief and loss during the holiday season. And the trend was not initiated by Elvis Presley's hit song, but traced back to the country cover in 1950. December 21st, the winter solstice marks the longest night of the year, prompting some churches to host a blue Christmas service that night. Acknowledging life has darknesses, and as the holiday season approaches, these services emphasize inclusivity, welcoming individuals from diverse backgrounds and beliefs to find support and encouragement through music, prayer, and messages of hope. Old Stone Church in Cleveland is hosting its second Blue Christmas worship service and providing a quiet and contemplative alternative for those finding the holidays challenging due to loss or depression. And their reverend emphasizes the, surface, the service's simplicity in a smaller chapel with plain decorations and relatively quiet music. Last year, over 60 people attended to honor grief and loss. And the church is embracing the diversity, plays a vital role in the community, supporting really marginalized individual, individuals through projects addressing homelessness, uh, reentry from prison and domestic abuse. I think Blue Christmas's services offer a real space for re reflection and remembrance and could be really important for those who are dealing with loss or addiction or even challenging relationships. And they need to go somewhere where it's not just 
the joyful message we hear all the time, but something that's more contemplative. And I think that these are really profound. And you might want to host one if you're a pastor or a leader in a church. Consider hosting a Blue Christmas at your church as well. Well, it's Christmas time. And I had a dream that was a really, really profound dream. It was so stayed with me. I was smitten by it. Because in the dream, under the Christmas tree was a Christmas present to us, to humanity. Of course, Jesus is our ultimate Christmas present. We celebrate Christ being born for Christmas, but we give each other gifts in the context of loving each other and really celebrating that life that Christ gave us. And in the dream, Christ was giving us another gift. So Jesus was giving us another gift. And I had a dream that different ones of us were unwrapping. As we unwrapped it, certain things were coming through that were beyond the desire of your own heart. They were the desire of God's heart, which made you go, wow, like people who are opening the presents were going, this is beyond what I, I could have hoped for or imagined. And that's Ephesians 3.20. Like the, the, the unwrapping of the present was more than we could have imagined for. And I really felt like it's such a simple image, right? To have a dream where we're opening a present from God. But have you ever considered asking God, is there something you have for me in this season? Have you ever asked God, what are you doing in my life? Because it is a gift to you. Everything God does for us is a gift for us. On top of the, the salvation through the resurrection of Christ and the death of Christ, we have been given this incredible gift. Second Corinthians 9, 15 says, thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. And that's talking about our salvation and our relationship and our connection to Jesus. But our life is filled with gifts and things that God's put inside of us and in front of us to reveal his nature even more for us. And Christmas for Christians is a time of celebrating Christ and his birth, being mindful and present with who he really is. But on top of that, I believe this year that God wants to give you a spiritual expectation and he wants to set your expectation for 2024. That he's going to do something that's going to take spiritual eyes to see. And I feel like if we could spend some time with God, and I'm going to encourage you to do that over this week or next week, that you would spend some time with God and he's going to reveal something that he has for you that's only for you, that he planned to give you in the season. And he wants to show you ahead of time. So when it happens, you say, wow, I am deeply spiritually encouraged for all God's dream because we we're heading into a year that might be one of the hardest years in modern times. And when I say that, it doesn't mean that it's going to affect you as the hardest year in your life. It doesn't mean that it's going to affect your family and the hardest circumstances of their life. Many of you are not in that season, but we have wartime activities in several nations. We have, you know, instability and governments all around the world. I know I'm here in America, so we have the elections coming up in 2024. So much is happening in 2024. We've had more uh, calamities and natural disasters than any time in modern history. They just keep breaking out. We have the volcano in Iceland. We've had the earthquake that just happened in China. We have things that are happening. The world is groaning and shaking that Jesus would be revealed. And in the midst of that, God wants to do something for you because God's not surprised by anything that's, that's happening. The world is groaning. The world itself is responding to the condition of humanity. And the condition of humanity is not good. But in God's heart, when God's looking at it, he's saying, I can work all of my plan with you who are on the earth right now. And I'm, I'm giving you part of my nature, part of my being, so that you can help manifest or bring forward humanity into a new place, a new cycle of what I desire and what I dream of. And so when we understand that, then we look at the world and what's going on and we're not afraid. And we're not just going, oh, Jesus is coming back soon and I'm just gonna be rescued from all this. But we look at it and we go, how do I get a partner with you, God, for all your love that you still have to pour out through my gifts, my talents, my career, my family, all the things that I have, let them be filled as containers for you. And it reminds me of Elisha when he went and the woman who, you know, he said, put out containers because they're gonna be filled by God with oil. And you have this incredible story where she puts out the containers and oil is filled on every, she even borrowed from her neighbor, she borrowed from everybody, and all this oil is filled in all these containers, and they were all completely filled in a season where there was such a barrenness or such a famine, and yet she had the money from all that to do everything she needed to do. And I just feel like this is a season where God's going to bring miraculous oil into the gifts and the containers of our lives, like our family, our businesses, our churches, or it doesn't matter what's happening in the world, but what's happening with you and God is going to be different. So I want you to picture something as we close this. I want you to pray and I want you to ask God, what is the gift you're giving me for 2024? What is something you put inside of me that you're unwrapping for me right now? What is something that I'm going to discover? What is something in my nature that you've put inside of me that you've wired me with that you want me to dig into, that you want me to learn, that you want me to disciple and discipline? I want you to really focus on this and do a, a hearing, listening prayer time with God. Listening prayer is a lost art, but this is something that if you set some side, you know, set aside time 
and you just listen to God, he's going to speak to you or put something inside of you, or you're going to hear a message within two weeks that makes you go, that's the thing I was waiting for. That's what God was going to tell me. And that will be a gift that God unwraps with you where he's going to reveal something about you that you can serve and love and connect to him. in. that's going to be one of your favorite things you've ever had. And maybe you've already, maybe this is a part two of revelation he's already given you, or maybe it's just a double portion of what he's already given you, but whatever it is, it's going to move you forward. If you have faith for 2024 to have a different result than you can anticipate or you can even look for right now. So bless you with that. I pray that God would richly give you dreams and visions and counters that he would open up the Bible with you as you read the Bible, that there'd be life application and study and depth and understanding like you've never had. Let 2024, God, be a, a season of discovery, both in the word, but also our spiritual identity as we read the word and as we hear your voice. And we pray for such a new resetting time, even while the world is shaking right now, that we would be unshakable, unwavering in our faith as we love you. In Jesus' name. Well, thanks for joining. I'm praying for you and your family to have such an amazing Christmas and Happy New Year. May God speak to you and be present and may you feel the hope for the coming year. I can't wait to see you next year. And thanks for being a part of this. I'm going to remind you that you can get Nutramedics and the code BOWLS. You're going to get 20% off of all products you buy to help your health journey. And also, we're still looking for those of you to become donors or partners to our ministry to help make this and more powerful content for under our ministry with a tax deductible donation. Make sure to consider Bulls Ministries. We'd love to be a partner of yours, or we'd love to just see your donor dollars at work in such a profound way. We'll see you next year.